Welcome to my NSC4 series. In this series of videos, I'm gonna be showing you everything that you need from the initial setup of the lab to the most complex labbing scenarios that you'll need to know to cover and prepare for and pass the NSC4 exam. Before we get into the content of the video first, I'm gonna ask you to do something. Hit the like button if this is a topic that you like. Let me know. It tells me that I need to make more videos like this so I can help you out. Hey everybody, welcome. This is the next video in the NSC4 training series where we actually power on the FortiGate VMs that we set up in the previous videos, uh, configure IP addresses on interfaces, and configure static routing. Uh, in this video, we will only look at uh, the configuration steps for setting IP addresses, uh, allowing access, and uh, configuring static routes. And then the following video, we're going to take a look at um, some, some show commands or some get commands that will show you information, as well as the routing monitor and the route lookup function. So I'll go ahead and power these on. And as they come up, I'll just remind you, if you missed it, in the previous video to this one, I showed you how to configure VMware Workstation LAN segments so that you can have completely separate network segments or subnets and VLANs inside of your virtual environment so that you can do this lab. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and log in. All right, I'm gonna configure the uh, interface settings on FortiGate 1, which is what we're on right now, and then I'm gonna fast forward through those same settings on 2 and 3. The only difference is on uh, FortiGate 2 and FortiGate 3, different IP addresses. Otherwise, the commands are identical, and I don't think you want to see that over and over and over again. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is configure system interface. Then we're going to edit port 1. Then we're going to set the mode to static. Currently, it's in DHCP. Uh, we're going to set IP in... Oh, got to hit that num lock. 10.1.1.105. It's in the slash 24. And then we're going to uh, set the allowed access, which is we want HTTP, SSH, and ping. And then we're going to hit next. And what we do, what happens when we hit next is it's, it's going to take us back to the interface. Uh, so you see here, it says FortiGate VM64 interface. Uh, it'll take us back to the interface prompt. If we hit end, it'll take you all the way back to the global, global configuration prompt which requires an extra step to get back to where we want to be. So hitting next, we're back to the interface. Now we're going to edit port 2, which if you remember from our diagram, let me show you that real quick. If you remember from the diagram here, port 2 on FortiGate 1 shares this 10.2.2.0 network, and port 3 on FortiGate 1 shares the 10.3.3.0 network with FortiGate 3. So we're working on port 2, which is this network shared with FortiGate 2. get back in here. We want to edit port 2. We're going to set mode static. We're going to set the IP address to 10.2.2.2 slash 24. And we're going to set the allowed access to HTTP, SSH, and ping. Then next, edit port 3. Set mode static. Set the IP address, 10331. Oh, I see a typo. So I'm gonna I'm gonna complete this one and go back to port two where I see my typo. Uh, set allowed access, HTTP, SSH, ping. Next. Now I want to edit port two again because I made a mistake. So I'm gonna go in here, and if you haven't caught it already, my mistake is I assigned the wrong IP address. This should be dot one, not 10222. This should be 10221. So I'm going to go in there and fix that. Set IP 10.2.2.1 slash 24. There we go. And now that I'm done configuring the interfaces, I could type next or I can type end. It'll take me all the way back and the interfaces are now configured. So in the next steps, I'm going to do the exact same thing, but on FortiGates 2 and FortiGates 3, but I'm going to fast forward through that so that you don't have to sit here and watch me do the same things over and over again. If you have questions about what I'm doing, or I'm skipping a step, or I'm just assuming you already know something, let me know in the comments and I can fill you in.
All right, so if we do a quick review here, we can see we have uh, FortiGate 1, and what we did is we've just configured the management IP on FortiGate 1, 2, and 3, and then we configured uh, this 10.2.2.1 IP address, 10.3.3.1 on FortiGate 1, which is used to communicate with the 10.2.2.2 down here on FortiGate 2, and the 10.3.3.3 on the FortiGate 3. As it stands right now, if we go to FortiGate 1, we issue an execute ping command, we could ping this 10.3.3.3 address and this 10.2.2.2 address, but only because those two subnets are directly connected, as shown in this diagram, to FortiGate 1. If we went to FortiGate 3 and tried to ping 2, it would fail, it wouldn't work, because it has no route to get there. It also does not have a firewall policy to allow it. I want to ask you, let me know in the comments below, what do you want to see covered in this lab series? Is it things like dynamic routing? Is it making IPS signatures? Is it setting up the security profiles? What makes you the most worried about taking the NSC4 exam? Let me know below. I'll make sure to answer your question and then make a video to cover that topic. All right, back into it. So in the next steps, we're going to configure static routing on 3 and 2. And then we're going to configure firewall policies on 1 to allow traffic to, to traverse from 3 to 2 and from 2 to 3. All right, let's get into it here. So as I mentioned, um, because FortiGate 1 has directly connected routes to 2 and 3, you could execute pings here and reach FortiGate 2 and FortiGate 3. If you want to see what your routing table looks like on a FortiGate, you issue get router info routing table all. And here, you know, I'll, I'll do a question mark. You can specify if you only want it from OSPF or if you only want to see BGP routes, ISIS routes, or only static routes, you can do that. I typically do all unless it's a giant environment. And then you get your table here. And as you can see, we have a S with a star, which means this is your, your candidate default route. Uh, I configured that a while ago. All it does is send anything that's not those three subnets there, out port one to the next top of 10111. Uh, and then also, as you can see, we have the directly connected sub subnets of 10110, 10220, 10330, connected to port one, port two, port three. For those reasons, we can execute a ping 2, 10, 3, 3, 3, and they succeed. And same thing for 10, 2, 2, 2. It'll also succeed. Now, if we move over to FortiGate 2, and we do a get router info routing table all, routing table is a little bit smaller. You see there's no default route there, and all it knows about are the two directly connected routes for subnets 10, 1, 1, 0, and 10, 2, 2, 0. If we wanted to pass traffic to a destination in that 10.3.3.0 subnet, we need to create a static route. And that's what we're going to do in the next steps here. Issuing configure router static. Well, helps if I'm typing. Issuing configure router static. Let me tab that out. We want to choose edit. And all we're doing is we're saying we want to edit a route. Since we don't have any routes, we're starting at 1. We're going to edit 1. New entry, one added. And in order to configure a static route on a FortiGate, you need to set a destination subnet. You need to set a device um, or a port that the traffic will leave. And then you need to set the next hop or what they call the gateway. So we're going to do that here. We're on FortiGate 2. Moving back to the diagram for a second, just to help you visualize this if you're trying to follow along. We're here and we want to have traffic reach here. So we know about this subnet, and we know about this subnet. We don't know about this subnet. So that's what our route's going to be for. All right, so we're getting back in here. We're going to set the destination to 10.3.3.0 slash 24. We're now going to set the device as port. What port? Let's go back and look. So we can look up here. We can see port 2 is the interface that has the 10.2.2.0 subnet. We don't want to send this traffic out to the 10.1.1.1. That's the management network. We want to send it into this 10.2.2.2. So we're going to select port 2. And then our next hop, or our gateway address, set gateway 10.2.2.1. Now how do we know what the gateway address is? That's the IP address configured on the next hop router that we're connected to. So on FortiGate 2, which is where we're at right now, the IP address in that 10.2.2.0 network is 10.2.2.2. The next hop is 10.2.2.1. And then because that's the only route we need to make, we can hit end. Now, like I said, in the interfaces, you could hit next here and drop back to the router or route 
static route configuration uh, menu, and you could continue adding static routes from that point. But since we're done, we can just hit end. We're going to move on to FortiGate 3. And again, same steps here. Configure router static. We're going to edit one. We're going to set a destination. We know that we can reach 10.3.3.0 and 10.1.1.0. We can't reach 10.2.2.0. So that's our destination that we want to reach. We're going to set that destination. We're going to set the device. It's going to be port 2. We're going to set the gateway, which is our next hop, which is going to be 10.3.3.1. And we're going to end. So now at this point, now that we've configured static routing, uh, the next logical step is to test it. And you're thinking, well, I can just execute a ping from this firewall to that 10.2.2.2, which is the other firewall hanging off the other end of the uh, number one forty gate. And this should work. But you'll be met with failure, and that's because we haven't yet defined a policy in forty gate one to allow the traffic to authorize it to traverse the firewall and go into that network. Like I said before, since we're dealing with firewalls and not routers, we have an extra step here, that extra security layer. Configuring firewall policies in a FortiGate is best done on the GUI. Now you can do it 100% on the command line, but there are so many options. Uh, let's see if I can pull it up here. Configure, that uh, helps if I'm typing. Configure firewall, I think it's policy. Yep. Uh, and then question mark. So if we say edit one, which is the first step in creating a policy and then question mark, we want to set, and you can see this list starts going and going and going and going. Uh, that can get very complicated. You can get lost very quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and end, and it's going to complain that you didn't set anything. That's what I expect. Uh, I'm going to instead suggest that you go into the GUI. So 10.1.1.1.105, which we know is FortiGate 1. I'm going to log in here. I'm going to finish the setup later. And once you log in, you'll be given this dashboard here. And on the right side, you can see we have dashboard. We collapse all these. We have security fabric, network, system, policy and objects, security profiles, VPN, user and authentication, login report. We want the policy and objects. And then under here, we want firewall policy. And then we're going to create a new one. So in here, let's call this FortiGate 2 to FortiGate 3 something easy. We know that this traffic is going to come in port 2. It's going to leave port 3. Uh, for the purposes of a lab, you could select all. There really wouldn't be any harm in that. But I've gone ahead and I've created address objects or firewall objects that uh, includes the subnet that FortiGate 2 and FortiGate 3 resides in. And as you can see here, um, looking at that address, FGD, FGT2, type is subnet, and the subnet's defined below that. It's assigned to a port. So I can go ahead and say, this is the source. I can click that in there. And the same thing for destination. I created one for FortiGate 3. I can click that in there. And this is just a more secure configuration than allowing all addresses from any port. Uh, you can set a schedule. We're not going to in the lab. You can define a service, and a service is exactly what you think it is. It's ICMP or it's HTTP. We're going to leave it open. We're just going to say all. The action is accept. We're going to leave it in flow-based. We're going to disable natting. We don't need that. We're not going to apply any security policies for the purposes of this lab. We don't need them. We're just doing static routing. But I do want to log all sessions, and I want to create logs when the session starts. And then last but not least, down here, this enable this policy radio button, you can turn that off and click OK. You'll have created the policy, but it will not be active. Now, that's useful in a production environment if you want to stage changes. Uh, you can go ahead and, and put them all in here and then have somebody else double check them. And then when your change window opens up, you could go ahead and log back in, enable this policy, click OK. Now your changes are active. But we're in a lab. We're going to go ahead and make this change live. Click enable this policy, make sure it's green, and then click OK. So there you go. We have a policy to allow traffic from FortiGate 2 to FortiGate 3 through FortiGate 1. Now we're going to create the opposite flow because we need a policy to allow traffic if it's initiated from FortiGate 3. So FortiGate 3 to FortiGate 3. Two. It's coming in port 3, leaving port 2, source is FortiGate 3, destinations FortiGate 2, no schedule. We're going to select all on the service, accept, flow base, turn natting off, 
no security profiles, all sessions, log at the beginning, make sure this policy is enabled, click OK. So there you can see uh, on the far right side, I love this little column feature here, it shows you how many, how active the policy is by measuring the, the quantity of data or the, the bytes traversing, using, uh, tra traversing the firewall using that uh, firewall policy. So right now it's at zero. If we go over here back to FortiGate, uh, let's choose FortiGate 3. Let's execute a ping to FortiGate 2. Ah, there we go. Now it's working. Fantastic. We'll go ahead and leave there. Go back to the GUI. And let's check. If we refresh, there you have it. 840 bytes have hit this policy. So we know it's working. Let's go back over here to FortiGate 2. Let's execute a ping to FortiGate 3. Remember, there's no directly connected route here. The ping succeeds again. Go back here, refresh the page. Again, 840 bytes have traversed the firewall using that policy. Fantastic. We have static routing enabled. We can reach um, FortiGate 2 from FortiGate 3. We can reach 3 from 2. We have policies set up, and we are logging that traffic. So there you have it. We've configured static routing in the lab. We've pinged from one to another, uh, from two to three, three to two, across FortiGate one. In the next videos, I'm gonna show you how to use the route lookup, which is a, a GUI function, uh, as well as using the routing monitor, which are important features to know for the NSC4 exam. Thanks for watching this far. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel. I'm gonna be making more like this. I'm also on Twitter, you can follow me there at infosec for human while I post daily about the things that goes on in between these videos. Again, thanks for spending time with me. I look forward to helping you in the future.